If you're going out drinking a few times a week, drinking is likely harming your growth. By the end of this video, you'll know how to minimize the impact of drinking on your gains. Welcome back, local alcoholic and soon to be doctor, Milo Wolf here. And today we're talking about the impact of alcohol, aka drinking, on your gains. Alcohol is a good time, but it's also a bad time for your gains. The ways in which alcohol interferes with gaining can be broken down into two categories. The first is recovery and the second is adaptation. Let's break it down. First, let's touch on recovery. A 2019 systematic review summarized how drinking can impact the recovery from lifting weights specifically. A total of 12 studies were found that met the inclusion criteria and looked at the impact of drinking after a session on the recovery process from that training session. The authors separated outcomes into either being biological outcomes, into being performance outcomes, or finally into being cognitive outcomes. Here's what they found by and large. When it came to creating kinase, heart rate, lactate, glucose, estradiol, sexual hormone binding globulin, leukocytes, or cytokines, or CRP, there were really no major effects of drinking on these markers. As far as testosterone went, again, there were kind of inconsistent effects at best. There were negative effects of drinking on urine volume output, cortisol, and potentially on calcium levels. Importantly, some data suggested that drinking alcohol reduced the concentration of amino acids in your bloodstream after consuming protein, which suggests it would have a negative impact on anabolism and thus muscle growth. As we'll get to later, data on signaling proteins and myofibular protein synthesis both back this up. In terms of performance, there was a fairly consistent impact on the recovery of force production, which is likely quite important and salient if you're a lifter who's training again the next day. There was little to no impact of drinking alcohol on jump performance or on power performance. Likewise, no real impact of drinking on muscle soreness or RPE or endurance. Finally, cognitive function was slightly impaired. This is likely a bigger deal for sports where you have to actually, you know, you have decision making involved. There are more complex skills involved versus lifting, but it's worth noting that cognitive function did seem to be impacted at least a little bit. Now that we've broken down the results, here are a few notes to keep in mind when looking at these results. First off, issues with recovery were generally most pronounced when alcohol was consumed in excess of about 0.5 grams of alcohol per kilogram of body weight. For someone weighing 80 kilograms, that's the equivalent of about 40 grams of alcohol. So you need to limit your alcohol consumption to about three glasses of beer or wine in order to minimize the impacts of alcohol on your recovery after a session. Alternatively, that's the equivalent of about three shots of vodka. Another note is that men seem to have a harder time coping with alcohol and recovery after a session versus women. Women seem to be better at dealing with drinking alcohol after a training session and still recovering as per usual. Another caveat when it comes to recovery is that sleep disruption after drinking substantial amounts of alcohol is pretty well documented and sleep is likely pretty important for recovery. And so if you're drinking so much that you find that your sleep quality is pretty rough and you feel pretty rough the next day, that likely isn't a good idea for recovery. Importantly, the effects of alcohol on the recovery after a lifting session do seem to be more pronounced, aka more negative, when you just had a harder training session compared to an easier one. So if all you did was hit four sets of arms and then have 16 beers down at the local stadium, yeah, your recovery might not be impacted as negatively as if you did a hard leg session, you know, five sets of RDLs, five sets of squats to failure, and then went drinking. So an easy strategy might be to keep an easier session for right before you drink, so that even if you drink a decent amount, the recovery from that session isn't as negatively impacted because it was an easier session. The final takeaway from this paper is that chronic drinking is not good news. You see things like low skeletal muscle mass. You see things like general issues with billy muscle, like for example, desensitization to leucine, a key amino acid in the muscle building process. In general, chronic drinking is not a good idea, even if you only have a few drinks every day. So for recovery, there do seem to be negative effects of drinking alcohol on the recovery from a session, but we have discussed some ways to minimize this impact. But what about anabolism or the muscle growth process itself? This is where a review paper by Steiner and Lang comes in. If you've ever read any sort of nutritional research or molecular biochemistry research, you'll find that they use a lot of text, not many graphs, and it makes for some of the most 
dense and potentially boring reading you've ever done. But let me just break down for you right away. First, alcohol appears to decrease basal muscle protein synthesis. What does basal mean? It just means without being fed or without training or without doing anything that might elevate your muscle protein synthesis, which is essentially part of the muscle growth process. Secondly, alcohol also appears to increase muscle protein breakdown, which as you might infer by hearing breakdown and muscle, that's not a good thing. We want to minimize muscle protein breakdown and maximize muscle protein synthesis. Next, alcohol also appears to make muscle less sensitive to anabolic stimuli such as eating protein, such as lifting weights. So all else being equal, if you do a session and you drank before that session, that session will result in less muscle growth compared to if you were completely sober. So alcohol use, both acutely and chronically, for anabolism and muscle growth measured directly is likely no good. Chronically, as I mentioned earlier, this can even result in something called alcoholic myopathy, which is low muscle mass as a result of chronic drinking. So generally, for both recovery and actual muscle growth from a session, alcohol is no good. But what about alcohol in combination with lifting weights, aka resistance training? This is where a review paper by people I presume to be lifters, Levitic colleagues, comes in. Again, similar findings. Alcohol broadly impairs the mTOR pathway, which is heavily involved in the muscle growth process, while lifting activates the mTOR pathway and makes you jacked. Broadly speaking, alcohol seems to have a neutral to negative effect on anabolic signaling after a session, but there aren't too many studies on this topic. With that being said, even if you chronically drink, you can still make gains. In fact, there's some evidence in people who have, for example, addiction to alcohol and thus are drinking chronically as a means of preventing, for example, alcoholic myopathy, and you do still see increases in muscle mass. It's not good news for growing muscle, getting stronger, recovery, or any of that stuff, but you can still make gains. All right, now that we've broken down a bunch of studies on alcohol and anabolism and the muscle building process on recovery and all that stuff, let me give you some recommendations on how to minimize the impact of alcohol on recovery from lifting, on your lifting progress and all that stuff. First recommendation, no alcohol is probably best. Next, the dose very much makes the poison. Ideally, limit any drinking to about three drinks max per bout. So about three beers, three glasses of wine, or three shots of vodka is kind of the least you can drink without it seemingly starting to really impact recovery from a session. Ideally, don't do this more than once to maybe three times a week. Even if you drink now and then, or even fairly consistently, as long as it's in moderation, you can definitely still make gains. As a final note, you may want to plan for an easier session before you go drinking and after you go drinking. By having an easier session before you go drinking, the recovery from that session won't be quite as poor as if you had a really hard session and then went drinking. Additionally, the day after drinking, most people don't feel their best. So by having an easier session, you're setting yourself up for more success. And this brings me to my final point. Just because you're hungover doesn't mean you can't go train. Getting some work in, like, you know, a relatively easier session is a lot better than getting no session in. So even if you're drinking, especially in moderation, and you're a little bit hungover the next day, you can still go to the gym and just do whatever you feel like you can. But getting something in while hungover is fine. Anyways, that's the video. If you liked the video, please comment, like, subscribe. Let me know what else you wanna see. Let me know whether or not you like the testosterone book in the background and the applied body composition assessment textbook in the background, or maybe even the certificate back there. If I do say so myself, I'm looking kind of fly. I will see you guys in that next one. Peace. This is where a review paper by Steiner and Lang, don't know how to pronounce it, I apologize. I am German. Eh, fuck it, let's pretend they all know what it means, okay? 16 beers with your mates, watching the football, and beating your wife afterwards, probably. That's too far, isn't it? Shit. Ah, getting cancelled over this one.